match on a stick to hydrogen. Big bang coming. Hafnium is going to be used in um, making layers. Now arsenic, as we all know, is very toxic. You can see freshly cut lithium there, nice shiny metal. It's like banging together two magnets which have the same polarity. I'm hoping to actually do some chemistry with Brilliant, which is why I've bought it. Um, yeah, it's pretty toxic. Its range of chemistry is relatively limited. But also the other allotrope of, of carbon, which is diamond, is extremely hard. That although the elements at this part of the periodic table are very unstable, uh, it took a guy called Charles James in 1911, a famous 15,000 times of recrystallization. You ready? Okay. Woohoo! And there she blows! It's meant to be pale green, but I've never actually seen it. You have this on, as a coating on the front of your mirror. It's rather like having a large bubble and banging a smaller bubble into it and suddenly you make a really wobbly bubble. So this is a piece of polycrystalline silicon. Now then, that was a really, really energetic reaction. It's actually a good reaction to have to chlorine because, like the label says, it's actually quite toxic. So the blue one in the middle of this, of this series is argon. One of my colleagues who used to work with it described it as evil. It quickly forms a layer of sort of oxides and nitrides in the air. So here we have a sample of titanium wire. And you can see it's about 0.1 millimetres in diameter. And there's 20 metres of it on this, on this reel. So again, it's a very nice malleable tin, for, tin type foil. Nickel is a metal which can produce allergies in some people. It's really nice, flows just like a liquid, but forms really quite nice balls. Because modern UK coins, although they have copper inside, have iron inside, so with a magnet you can just pick them up. Let's give this a go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> like bullets, they're quite incredible. So this is a small sample of germanium. It is said uh, that people get off the bus when selenium chemists get on. And now we'll pour the bromine into the, to the bottle. So you can see the liquid bromine at the bottom. It's that it's used in smoke alarms. These are some of the neodymium atoms that are isolated in a glass that contains yttrium and aluminium together. Some years ago we had a professor here who bought a really big krypton fluoride laser because it's generated as the byproduct of one of the of testing of atomic bombs. Uh, so we have to handle this under nitrogen because generally it will form an oxide layer. I actually have here a vodka glass made out of zirconium. Because the gases are gaining more energy and they are occupying more space and becoming more buoyant. So the helium is gone back to the ceiling where it really wants to be. The niobium compound gave both results at the same time. Most organisms, beginning with you and me and going down to bacteria, have enzymes that contain molybdenum. So chromium is a transition metal. They have discovered that the chemistry of technetium is in many ways quite similar. Very nice sample of ruthenium, very useful for, for catalytic chemistry. Rhodium is a very rare metal. The price of palladium has gone down recently though. It was used as the, or was still used, as the basis for photographic film. And we look through and we look at the different colours of the lines. Now I'm not going to touch the cadmium because we know about some of the issues of toxicity. You see a beautiful sample of tin metal and you see it's a really beautiful rod. There it goes. Oh actually that's quite spectacular at the end. Antimony. So here we have antimony. This bell shaped here is a sample of tellurium. Purple crystals of iodine now subliming and becoming more volatile. Ready? We have a gram of cesium in a glass vial. We have our remote control device. Let's see what happens when we put it into water. Lanthanum is the first element in the series called the rare earths. They're not terribly rare. Would you believe it's used in self-cleaning ovens? But perhaps the most interesting one is that it's been used to enable us to get within one one thousandth of a degree of absolute zero. This is an old chemistry book that I've got 
there is a space for element 61, promethium. This is a sample of samarium and there's a very small amount of it here. So we use it in the tubes in TV screens to get different colours. I went to this lecture because I couldn't imagine how anybody could make it interesting and it was really fascinating. Uh, terbium is also used uh, in certain magnetic devices. This wonderful sample. You'd be talking about tens of millions of atoms. Uh, holmium is a very interesting element because it has the highest magnetic moment. Uh, I think this is one of the ones which, because of its pink coloration, gets used in jewellery and things like sunglasses and things like that, if memory serves. And this was the world's supply of proactinium. So this is a terbium, and it's a very, very old research sample, and you can see that the, the label is handwritten. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a very, very special sample of lutetium, again from the bottom end of the periodic table, the lanthanides. So this is a sample of tantalum wire, it's a very high quality research sample, 0.2 millimetres in diameter. Tantalum, I haven't got a clue what it's used for. To record some uh, spectroscopic data on it and prove that they had actually made it. So this is a sample of rhenium, I hear the osmium itself. And so that this arrangement just seems to fall to bits before it can properly form that the iridium sample is a sponge. It's very, very high value, not just for jewellery, but also for the production of autocatalytic converters. And you can see that the phosphorus is oxidised in the air and it's taken some of the paper with it to generate a nice P for phosphorus. Came up with the idea of... Um... Gold, obviously, is also a, a storage of wealth because of the fact that it's so inert. If you want to become rich, there are better ways than trying to make gold. My, my other half's wedding ring. Red material that is made of thallium. There you go, straight back down to background. Because the discovery of UUH was announced simultaneously. Yeah, it's tungsten. So this is tungsten. It's long been regarded as being, uh, bismuth 209 has long been regarded as being the, um, the heaviest non-radioactive element. Polonium was given to a unfortunate Russian citizen. Most of our students have difficulty even remembering the, the name as a droplet of water splitting into two. Changing my tie to alkali metal tie. The people who discovered radium and the, the same were really excited about it. It has a very high refractive index and a very low uh, dispersion. It may not have been any bigger than the tip of a pin. People start going, Ooh, not sure about that. This is the boogeyman. Uh, this is uranium turnings. So from here onwards everything has been man-made. None of it naturally occurs. And nobody would have known except at that point he was too tired to repair the bench. They're extremely radioactive, very hard to handle. That this is an example of barium sulphate. It's a very heavy mineral. So obviously it's pretty important our planes don't fall to bits in mid-air. So if we just like tip some out on the floor, we can see that the, the nitrogen itself will come out like a liquid. You see it's like, like pouring water. I still get people in the streets shouting hello Einstein at me when they're suitably drunk. Going close now Brady, you can see all that really quite nice molten iron where neutrons, which had only recently been discovered when he did these experiments, is famous in Russia because he was the person who worked out the standard for the strength of vodka. You may have seen light sticks like this, building enormous machines, huge laboratories, or in the place where an element was first discovered. He worked in um, Berkeley, California, and it had a tap in the wall which he could open and Largo would come out. What's the next element? Hassium. I know nothing about Hassium. Should we make something up? Because for the first time you could see bones inside people's hands. You can imagine that there's intense competition. And you can see the orange sodium flame. <laughs> oh, it's on your camera. Oh, it is too and it will be down here. But here we can see a really nice sample of indium. It might be that before we've started updating some of these videos, element 119 will be announced and nobody will be more excited than me.